take the concept of Tajamuka to your constituency. Let's all take it there. Because everybody in Harare knows that the government has failed. But we are not us here. <laughs> and the name of the demonstrator, Pachikoro, more various Pachikoro, Jairu, Jairu. Tono, to my police, I want to see Kere, Kumuku, Ningi, Mahembos. I want to see Kere, Kumuku, They don't have the capacity to stretch when you do a nationwide protest or demonstration in the bond notes, in all these things. I still remain a pragmatic, honest politician to say, I don't want to mislead people. I'm a member of parliament who came from a pre-budget seminar in Blawai, and we all accepted the bond notes. Why should I work outside others? You heard Mangunja was there to sell the idea. Chinamasa was there to sell the idea. No MP opposed that. If there's anything we're told to actually go and get people to accept it. And for me, I see nothing wrong with the bond notes. What I see is the problem that why don't you go and demonstrate and protest Pamba Pema ministers Zaruba, Kuma Chinese companies Zaruba Samari. The problem is not the bond note. The problem is the corruption and the siphoning of money. So let's go to the source. Just my two cents. <laughs> In the honor Mudzmai Wang, Ani. Murume Chikomba. The Noro Murume here can a problem. Look at Zongo. Do not pay the Ranaka company in the mine. Murume are a name in a rag. Saka bond did not hear it each year. Your problem is corruption. Siphoning. Yet no zero. My Chinese companies are more zero. Zimba the ministers are more zero. My office my ministers are more zero. And the Kandego could not be thrown years and pay a foot. It's good off to say corruption. So to me, the modus operandi is, is skewed. It's not, it's not making sense. There's not much that is happening. So they were not happy about my comments on that. They were not happy that I met Kasukwere as well. As a result, we had the people on the ground. I was expecting the president to arrive. The next thing I'm told, the president is not arriving. I'm a member of parliament who has been newly elected. And I want you to feel me. And I've, tell, I've told people that the guest of honor is trying to lie. The amount of energy that they, they, they spend on activism, if that energy could be channeled towards their constituencies, surely would not lose. Because there is so much out there, and the Zimbabwe electorate, like the Norton, Norton electorate, is like a class of students ready for the lecturer or for the teacher they have their pens and pads ready, and they're just waiting for the teacher to come. In the teacher or in the lecturer, I'm talking about people who want to be counselors, people who want to be MPs. They're ready. People are ready. But it seems the leadership is not ready to serve the people. I think this is where we have the problem. It's important that in understanding that, there's got to be a third force that is going to come through. And this is a third force of young people who are the majority suffering out of this state of the economy. They were forced to take part in an election. You know, certain things you must be grateful. The hard economic, the hard economic uh, times of Zimbabwe have forced the young people to be involved in politics. I will give a breakdown of the Norton statistics. Who really voted? It's interesting. Uh, you have the neutrals, those who never wanted to vote, who voted. You had the young people who were excited voting for the first time. And you also had those who are tired of their parties. Let me say this again. Tired of their parties. They're tired of MDC. They're tired of ZANU-PF. They're tired of all the political parties. So, that must send a message to the political parties themselves that do we still have a base? Are we still relevant? I'm a known person, and it would be naive or fast to say they did not know who Timber was. The, 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 the electorate knew who Timber was. The involvement of the youth in politics in the corridors of power. Up to now, there is no political party that has given us an indicator that they wanted to work with me. 
being 60 to 75 percent of the population. We are still waiting for them to be able to tell us the way forward. Do I believe in setting up a political party? No. I believe in working with a political party which is progressive. If any party can offer you 70 to 80 seats for them, what's the point of creating a party? That has been extended and community. There shall be a, a third force who equally want change. The third force that I'm talking about is a third force which, and I'll, I'll say this to all Zimbabweans, there's no ways that you can rule this country without a component of zanu -PF. Impossible. A component of zanu -PF is important. It's one of the major ingredients that you have. It's like you baking without flour. <clears throat> so without Zanu PF being involved, then there's no one who's going to take over this country. No wonder why there was excitement. And there's excitement about people first. Because it's supposed to focus on Zanu PF. The wonder why there's excitement on the war veterans that's supposed to focus on Zanu PF. It's critical we understand that. Zanu PF is the ruling party, it is the majority of the people. Equally, when I also say that Morgan Changre should lead the coalition, it's from an empirical evidence point of view that he's the biggest opposition. Equally, Zanu PF is the ruling party and it is the majority of the people. So, how can you then win an election without a component of Zanu PF?